My name is Bruce Pitcher, and I was given a golden opportunity of being on extreme weight loss eight years ago where I lost over 200 pounds. And in that time, I found my purpose in life. And now I'm taking seven individuals to come live with me in Arizona for the next 90 days. And not only are we going to transform their bodies, but we're going to transform their entire lives. And we're going to show them exactly what it means to live larger in life. And I can't wait for you guys to see what amazing transformations these guys do in 90 days. My name is Hunter Schroff. I'm from Alvin, Texas, and my starting weight is 409 pounds. What I want from this experience is to really kind of rediscover myself, really be the person that I know I was put on this earth to be. And you've lost that. I guess. One of my biggest things I think was holding me back is the feeling that I've gone too far and that like I had no chance to really ever uh, reach my full potential. Hello, how are we doing? Good. So we got some bags today. Okay. Yeah, and they're full of rocks. Okay. Lots of rocks. Okay, to weigh this thing down. Okay, <clears throat> lots of rocks in there. Well, I've struggled with weight like basically my whole life. Um, I was bullied as a kid. Yeah. I didn't have I didn't have a lot of friends. Um, so that kind of like as I grew up, that's just kind of how it kept going, and I kind of put myself in like a like a bubble of solitude, and that's why that's why I kind of took the job that I took was to stop myself from ever thinking about like any situation that I had. I would just work 72 hours a week, 80 hours a week if I had to. As the weight got more and more, and I, I kept trying, but I felt that like I, no matter what I did, no matter what program I did, what diet I did, what workout I did, I had something that would hold me back inside, and I would never be able to break the bad habits that I had, and that I would keep going down the road that I was going. So we're gonna talk about detours. Okay, so out of all of you guys here, how many of you thought when you were going as a freshman in high school or whatever else, that your life was going to end up where it is right now? Did you have something completely different of what you thought? Where'd you think your life would be? Anybody want to share where they thought maybe their life would be a little bit? A whole lot easier. <laughs> yeah, you probably didn't think all the... How many marriages, Amber, were we talking about? <laughs> hey, I was a widow, thank that, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you didn't think that, though. No. You didn't think you'd be like right here. Probably you were going through high school and it was going to be smooth sailing. I'm going to marry my high school sweetheart. Da -da -da, we're going to go here. We're going to do this. All that stuff, right? Yep. All the detours that have popped into your life. And how many of those detours have thrown you off? Off kilt. Yeah. It's like you were driving. You got a flat tire and you were going to Florida from California. And it's almost you went and poked four other tires. And you stopped where you were and you let the detour not get you to your destination. I had two parents. Um, well, my birth mom died when I was three. Um, I don't talk about it a lot. It's not something that I really like ever focus on. But she died of obesity. <sighs> my dad married um, a year later, within a, like a year and a year and a half later, um, to my stepmom, who was a wonderful stepmom. Um, she owned her own business and she was very successful. My dad's from the Seychelles Islands. It's an island in the Indian Ocean. And so he came here as like a foreigner and he did everything he could to work hard and put food on the table for me and my brother. My mom worked all the time and my dad worked all the time. And uh, that basically left me to be at home by myself. I would basically come home from school and basically kind of sit down, watch TV and eat. We've had all the times excuses why we haven't reached our full potential. Excuses why we haven't, we've played the ace in the card, okay? So what I want us to do, we're gonna take a trek with these bags, a detour along this road, this long road. You're gonna walk for a long time. I'm just gonna forewarn you, carrying the burden and the detours that you've had with you. Right, so we have about a certain amount of weight in this. Certain amount of weight that you guys have lost. Certain amount of weight though that the detours that have held you down. So I want you guys to take this bag, 
right now take hunter this big one's yours okay and then the, your guys's bags are lined up here for you ladies right here but i'm going to take this tape and you're going to pull out some of the rocks i don't care if it's one rock or whatever you're going to put the tape on there and you're going to write all the detours all the stuff that's happened all the excuses that are happening and you're going to carry them with you because you're going to see how much weight you've been carrying extra with you along this way you know what i mean how it's held you back from where you want to be and really the struggle of it so I was always the kid, no one ever really wanted to talk to me. Like I would try to sit with people and be kind of pushed away and be made fun of. I never got picked for sports teams or anything like that. So it just kind of led to me, you know, leading myself into that little life of isolation. I, I did spend a lot of my childhood alone. So like at a really young age, um, my biggest goal was to like join, join the military. Cause I was like, man, that'd be like the only option that I have where, you know, you kind of have like that band of brothers and people that you can rely on and they don't really have a choice, you know? But as I got older and the weight continued, that became less and less of an option. My mom owned her own business and uh, she, once she kind of started to get away from that, she started to like heavily consume alcohol. And that led to her and my dad fighting quite a bit but I was always the kid who saw kids at school and you know who didn't have two parents and I was like, no, I, don't, I really don't want that as a kid. So I always fought you know, for my parents to stay together, which I probably shouldn't have done. I think that caused more problems than, than it helped. And that led to more fights and more fights and caused my stepmom to continue to drink heavily up until the end where my stepmom tried to put my dad in jail for her. He said that he hit that he hit her. I know they had altercations, but it's from my understanding those never got physical from what I saw. But once that happened, that really kind of shattered everything because even though she was my stepmom and she never liked fully adopted us or anything like that me and my brother she'd always claim us as hers and you know claim to love us and everything and once that happened it just like <sighs> shattered my life in the sense that you know I felt that she chose alcohol over me me and my dad didn't really know what to do or where to go I remember we like stayed on my aunt's couch for like three four weeks I tried to talk to her and tried to figure things out, and she basically wanted nothing to do with us. We spent 15 plus years together, and now all of a sudden it's just gone. And like I didn't really know how to how to like deal with that. And I think that also led to me, you know, contributed to my isolation is like you know I, I don't want to bring people in because if I bring people in and then they all of a sudden leave, that's <laughs> that sucks more than it is to just be alone. It's probably been like at least four years since we spoke. I think the last time I tried to talk to her, <laughs> she was intoxicated. And I felt like that was the only time that she really ever wanted to talk was if she was intoxicated. <laughs> and that wasn't really anything that I wanted to continue to deal with. So I just said, I'm done. I don't really want to deal with this anymore. I don't want this. I don't want you in my life. And I want you to take the time on this walk to really isolate and think, think of what the detours though, not have been bad, but it formed you for who you are. I think of my detours in my life. I think of a detour in my life of actually when I finished extreme weight loss and I stood up on the scale and I hit my goal. And I thought, oh yeah, I've made it. I've arrived. This is gonna happen. Oh, so last season got on Good Morning America. I can't wait to go on Good Morning America. None of that happened. None of it. 
So I have this picture in my mind, like all this was going to happen. Oh, it's going to be great. I'm going to be able to do this. I'm going to be able to do that. I'm going to be able to help all these people. Nothing. It all came crashing in my face. It was a detour. I ended up back to where I was before the show, living out of my car, having to figure out where I'm going to do laundry, not figuring out where I'm going to live. All the stuff came back. It was a detour. And I had a choice though this time to apply the lessons and be like, man, all those detours though before the show created me to handle this situation, handle what I want to do, handle why I'm here with you guys, why I talk every single day about gratitude. You heard me today on the live talking to the team. We have a team full of larger in life coaching people too that don't give a damn about gratitude sometimes. Like we have 100 people on that page. There should have been 100 posts. And there wasn't. Why? Why? To me, that just like crushes me. Because they're not taking what they've been through of these detours in life, all the excuses, and they're just, woe is me. I want you to take the time. When you write on your rock, I'm going to give you five minutes. But I want you to take the time and walk individually, be in your thoughts, be in your emotions of who you want to be because of the detours and how you're going to leave all the aces in your cards all behind from now on. I don't care who's first. I don't care how fast you go. Just do the best you can. But I want you to think and I want you to figure out all this extra weight that you guys have been carrying and what's held you back. All right. And you're going to ride on these rocks. And as we go along the journey, I'll show you guys what we're going to do with them. Hi, my name is Callie Brown. I am 26 years old. I'm from Richmond, Virginia, and my starting weight is 308. Why are you here? That's a good question. Um, I think I've reached my, my new bottom. I had amazing parents. Both of those people, you know, whenever we needed something, they were there. Around the age of 10, I think it was, my parents got divorced. My mom at the time, she um, went to live with family in North Carolina. My dad, a couple years later, he ended up getting deployed after getting married. Um, and so I stayed with my stepmother. I wanted so badly at the time, you know, for my parents to be together. I wanted for them to be together, everything to be fine. But the truth is that, you know, it wasn't. And I, I understand why they went separate ways and everything. But being like a little kid, you're like, oh, this is my fault. What did I do? I've never sat down and pinpointed a time in my life where, oh, maybe this is where things like kind of started, right? Maybe that's the reason that led me to, to drink and to, to now eat. I dealt with bullying. We were in class and a girl looked at me. I was wearing my, my jersey because we had just won our soccer game. She looked at me and she said, well, what did you break your pants because you're so fat and so you put on something else over it? That's one that sticks out. But there were several of those. I moved to a, a new high school, just changing everything. I mean, that was, that was a struggle. I, I come from a thick line of addicts. My dad was an alcoholic. He got sober. He's been sober for about 26 years. My dad's dad was an alcoholic. My mom's dad was an alcoholic. Growing up, I would see it. I would see just the way addiction just like took over. And from a little girl, you know, it, it, scared, it scared me. Because I, I tried so hard to to like not be those people, right? Because I didn't want that for my life. I started drinking at the age of 17. It was just something that to do on the weekends. I wish I never started it. You guys are writing those down now and identifying them. If you feel like you're done, that's fine. You don't have to get a ton in there. You don't, hey, if you have two or three, I don't care. I didn't pick you guys, like I said the other day, to 
because you were just a normal person. I picked you guys because you're uncommon. You have something in you that you don't realize you have. And you need to start seeing it and you need to start believing it and you need to start loving it like there's no tomorrow and making an impact that you guys don't even know what you're going to do. So let's bring it in for the chant and let's get hiking. Let's get trucking. Family on three. One, two, three. Family! Was there like a moment like when did you know it wasn't like a real problem? My best friend. She said she didn't want anything to do with me. Punching cars and throwing drinks at people, getting kicked out of places. It's creating a scene. Thinking you need thinking you need something to like be pretty or be worthy. It's hard for me. Like talking about it. Like, because you never really talked about it? No, not at all. Because I don't want to. It's just it's easy not to. No, it's so easy not to. Just to f numb it out. My lowest point of alcoholism, you're sitting in your problems. You're just in the bottom. You're just in the bottom of the barrel, like looking up, begging for help. You almost just get to this point where you're like, oh my God, I'm, I'm too far gone. I haven't drank in 18 months. I got sober and I'm like, oh, I have this shit figured out, but I didn't, you know? And like, why am I still using things? Why am I still doing this? I, I think I got to my current weight by not wanting to feel things, like just wanting to numb them. Yeah, I think my parents are proud of me. I just feel guilt, that's what I feel. Just like this overwhelming sense of guilt. Because sometimes I feel like they deserve better. I love the way they're zoned in right now. You can tell they're really thinking about these detours, taking it to heart, taking the genuineness of what this really can do for their life. And if they're doing this the right way, this, could, this exercise, could be one of the most powerful things in your entire life, without a doubt. And I think they're taking it to heart. You're almost halfway there, so that's good. All of you guys have lost a good amount of weight so far in this journey, okay? So I want you to set your rocks down, okay? And pull out some of the rocks that you haven't written on, okay? And get rid of those rocks now, because you've lost physical weight, right? So it should start to get a little bit easier, because you've been what? Putting in the time, keeping your integrity, all those things that are important, right? So still, but I still feel like there's some things that you guys are still holding on to, correct? It sucks because uh, my brother still has a kind of a relationship with her because he stayed in California where she is. I wanted to kind of respark that relationship, but it's kind of my fear that, you know, knowing that she still drinks from my understanding of my brother, that's what it's gonna turn back into is her drinking and, you know, blowing up my phone and weird times and uh, wanting to spark up a conversation and bring up things that don't matter and bring up my dad that she says that she still cares about but you know threw us out so that's just something that I, I, I don't want to deal with anymore even though I, I think about it quite a bit um, I don't really admit it but I you know I do think about that and I have wanted to start that relationship again but I don't really know where it would go that's the easy part losing it like losing it is literally the easy part. And how many of you just been so focused on just losing it, but you still feel like you got so much to go. You still got a lot of weight to lose. And I'll tell you what it is that's slowing you down. You're holding on to that stuff that's still written into there, okay? So you're gonna take the next half of this trek that you guys are going on and really think about those burdens. Cause that's, that's cool. Yeah, we've lost some weight, but it still feels heavy. So what? 
Because at the end of this thing, when you're done at 90 days and you've lost some weight and you're still carrying these things that are in the bag, it won't matter. It's still gonna feel damn heavy, real heavy. You're gonna get back in your car, you're gonna go back home, you're gonna go back to your normal life, and it's gonna feel like you didn't lose any weight at all. You could lose 100 pounds, 150 pounds, and it won't matter. How many of you carrying, how many felt that on that trek? Felt it heavy, right? It's freaking heavy. Why are we carrying that around? I would probably say that I miss her. <laughs> you know, I, I do kind of miss our conversations and, and I miss having a mom in my life. You know, she would have to not choose alcohol over me and I would want to sit down with her sober and just talk about life. Think about it on this last one if you're ready to let it go. Ask yourself if you're ready. If you're not ready, don't let it go. I'm dead serious. Don't take it out. But I'm telling you, it's a lot easier if you're not carrying it around, right? A lot easier. I want a lot of things. I would love to lose weight, obviously. I would love to believe that I'm capable, that I can do anything that I set my mind to. I want to be able to finish this thing because I owe it to myself. I really do. I truly do. All right, so. We're almost to the home stretch, okay? So, I want you guys now, okay, to pull out some of your rocks that you've written on. Lexi, you ready to let go of some of those? You ready to read it? Uh, yeah. All right, read, read one of them. My anxiety holding me back and my shyness and uh, undeserving and unworthy of changes and like doing something more with my life. Pull out another one. Read that one. Too scared to leave the house. Perfect. Read another one. Uh, comparison and guilt and shame. Good. You ready to let all of that go? All of it. You wrote it down on a forgiveness letter, right? A lot of that. Yeah. And have you been holding on to some of that? Yeah. Still? It's been weighing probably more than the weight that you've been losing. And that was a big, long trek. And now you're not gonna have it anymore. Dead serious. Tamika, read a couple of years. It, it's crazy to kind of process everything that's been holding you back. You know, all the weight that you carry around, all the struggles. And it really made me think about like all the little things that I've held on to, like my dream job that I always wanted growing up, or my family that wasn't as perfect as everybody else's. Callie, read yours. Pull out another one. Fear as a whole. Why is fear? What are you most scared of? I'm scared of relapse. But you're gonna be done with that now, right? Because yeah. that's not who you are. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Let it go. In the midst of it, you're holding this bag of rocks and you're automatically reminded of all this baggage that you've been carrying for years. I mean, it, it was heavy, it was heavy. And so you just wanna get rid of it. You just wanna throw it to the side. <laughs> Where's the detour ones? I want you guys to pull out a detour one. Look at one of your things. What shaped you though for who you are? Anxiety. But what has it done for you though, Lexi? A good. Have you looked at that as always a bad thing? Uh, it helps me. Like understand other people more. Yeah. yeah. Like listen to other people. So that's a gift, right? Mm -hmm. So that de detour of anxiety has done what for you? How have you been looking at what it's done for you? 
And it helps me be a better person. Yeah. And especially a better person for this group. Whenever we started carrying the weight and like realizing how much I've been carrying with me just for no reason. And then once we stopped the first time and like got rid of some of the rocks that we didn't need anymore, that was like eye opening that there's no reason to carry this with us whenever we're, it's not helping us at all. You bring so much joy to my life. I've told you that. You bring so much joy to this group without even knowing it. And you thought you were the shy person with anxiety, but that anxiety, that, sh that scared person that doesn't, you bring so much joy. Literally, when I see you every morning, I'm just like, freaking I love Lexi. She just like, in our, and we have the quiet chant. You bring that to the table because of that. And that's the way you gotta look at it. It's not a bad thing. Taking the detours. What about your detour, Callie? Where is it? Relax. So what has that created? Somebody that's scared to even try. How many people have you helped? How many people have you helped being sober now? For how long? How many months? With alcohol? 18. How many people have you helped along the way? A lot. Were you able to share your detours? Were you able to share the experiences? Yeah. Great, right? That's an awesome detour. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. Okay, now I want you guys to get rid of all these rocks. You're gonna get rid of all of them, get them out of your bags, and then damn it, we're running the rest of the way in. So empty these things out. Take the time. I don't want you to just set it down and be like, yeah, okay, I'm putting it here. Put it there and be done. We got to just throw those rocks as far and as hard as we could. Wow, what a, what a feeling that was, just emotionally to get rid of those and to let go of them. It felt good. Yeah, it felt really good just to, just to be able to let go of it. I've always carried that with me since I was a kid that I had anxiety and whenever I threw the rock, I was like, I'm done with that. I, there's no reason to let that control my life anymore. And I think that was the main one that I was really like looking forward to get rid of. I just, it felt riveting to just release and just to throw those rocks away and just, you know, you're, that's it. That, that's it, like we can't hold on to it anymore. Like the weight has to be off of our shoulders in order for us to move forward in our life. Life is always changing and things come at you that are not always good. And if we don't learn to let those things go, then we carry them with us and it, it is, it drags us down. You know, you're given another opportunity to try. And so you have to give it like everything because if I can't do it here, where am I gonna do it? Where am I gonna do it? Like we all have different stories, um, but it almost brings us closer together as a group and a team. And so I really enjoyed how close we felt. Hey, what did I tell you about this exercise? It's a process, yes. You can start letting go right now, every single day, and unleashing it, and being able to run full speed when you guys need to run. We do not change our standards, right? We don't change those now. You let's release that, and now we go hardcore. Stop setting the limitations on yourself. You're gonna have so much circumstances in your life that are gonna be shit. <laughs> like even driving here today in this rain, like, was crap and you can either look at it as a negative thing and make it ruin your day or you can look at the positives and make you stronger from it. I'm grateful for you guys here and I'm grateful for um, the life that I've had. If it wasn't for the detours of my life and the people that have saved my life, I wouldn't be here today. I have zero regret of everything I've been through. I have zero regret my dad went through. I, I have zero regret of me trying to take my life once. I have zero regret because it's shaped me to who I am today, to be here with you guys and to share experiences with you guys. And I am so proud of you. I want you guys to know how much I want you guys to be successful. So when I tell you to go harder, know it's out of love and everything that I have. And I'm gonna push you guys harder than you've ever been pushed. And no, I'm gonna challenge you, each and every one of you. I'm coming hard because you guys have to see what I see. You have to see what you're capable of. So let's bring it home. Let's go. LTL on three. One, two, three, LTL! It's fun.
funny because Lex is here, you know, and uh, she usually doesn't come on a Monday night, but I asked her to stay tonight because obviously she had um, somebody leave. Quit. I'm just going to say it. Quit the show, too. You guys know the rules. Like I always said, you miss a workout for any reason. <laughs> Obviously, they're an emergency. But if you just bail out on the family, on the group, then you're you're out.